Hey everybody, what's up? How are you? I am going to analyze a game somebody posted on Reddit. I haven't looked at it at all, but the guy put a lot of work in it to, into it. It's a game he lost, and it's a game he played against a strong player, some 12-year-old rated expert. So I think it might be an interesting game. And we're, he's playing White Pieces, the Reddit poster who posted it. So let's see what the heck happens. C4, C5, C3, plays a C3 Sicilian. Pawn takes. Now, pawn takes is not usually... Okay, this is like a system that's not so common that black is played here. It's considered, I think, to be slightly better for white, but I, I can't remember the details. I know bishop e2 is an interesting move here. Bishop d2 is also, I think, the main move. e4, and knight e5 is theory. And the poster said he, he decided against this move in the game because after takes, pawn takes... The e5 pawn would be far too easily advanced to protect. But look at the e4 pawn. Uh, the e4 pawn is weak too. So I can't remember how the theory goes, but I, I know that this position is, is is totally good for. It's totally cool for white. I think I think they go knight e7 actually. And I don't remember if it's queen c2 or bishop e2 or what. Uh, maybe it's queen a4 even. I, I just can't recall the theory. But I know that knight e5 is the main move, and I think white has some small advantage here. Because we have the two bishops, and that's basically it. Again, I don't remember the theory. But in the game, knight to d2 was played. And after that, uh, black went knight f6. And, and usually when I analyze these games, I kind of... I, I only really focus on the moves that are obvious to me as being wrong. Because if somebody is rated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of points less than me, if I have to sit there and really work something out, that's not the, probably the most important thing they need to work on. What they need to work on is those moves where instantly I can tell those moves are bad. So I'm just telling you, that's my general process of thinking when I look at a lower rated player's games. Um, so interestingly enough, he rejected bishop c4 because the queen g5 castles bishop h3. I don't know, somewhere my gut tells me like this should still be good, but... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, okay, this is queen g5 move is actually annoying. But okay, I mean, we need to get castled. I mean, the game he went queen c2. Uh, queen e2 he gives as an option, but that looks silly. It's hard to believe that this developing move. Why not just maybe, maybe queen b3 here or something? And then if he castles, I don't know, I'm just thinking about sacrificing the pawn, like, but it's tough. Whenever we castle, he goes bishop h3. It's just like we, in chess, you just have to get your pieces out. You just have to do it. Um, so, I mean, like, I, I don't know, maybe queen b3 is, is the best idea. I'm just kind of go for some end game. Hmm. Because you can't just not develop. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, bishop c4, I would really try to play it. My gut tells me that somehow it should still be okay. But I could be wrong. Maybe d5 here or something. Because if he takes this... Yeah, that's annoying, actually. I, I was thinking castle queenside in this type of situation. And maybe or we could take an f7 first. And use our lead in development. But if he just castles... Then it's like, what next? Well, now d5 is interesting. And if queen g2, castle queen side. And the knight goes somewhere. Uh, but we have like rook g1, and, or bishop takes knight and rook g1. I don't know, my gut would tell me that like, we just have to find a way to make this work. So I'm going to check with Houdini and see. Alright, so it does think the line is okay. Um... I'm curious, queen b3, castle, d5, knight e5, okay. But, I mean, the point is queen g2 doesn't work, at least. But somehow this is, um, oh, is knight g4 coming? b5, whoa. It's weird how good this evaluation is for, for black, actually. But it says, actually, uh, all right, bishop c4 is the best move. I mean, just... It's interesting how intuition works. I mean, like, I know that just somehow 
Uh, maybe queen b3 is okay, though. Let's see. Yeah, queen b3 is like the safer move. Uh, but I know that somehow this has to be okay. It's just it, the rules of chess require you to be developing your pieces, and it's just, somehow it always works out. Like, it, you know, because his pieces aren't developed here, so now it makes perfect sense. Um, you, you know, this is just a, a famous rule in chess. Like, first of all, you need to understand that you have like a strong need to to do something. You, you need to develop your bishop and f1. So first you have to understand that's the key to the position. Then second of all, you have to look around and realize you can't do it so easily. And then third of all, you realize, you have to realize, I don't care that I can't do it. I'm going to find a way to do it because it's so important. And that's why, like, just to me, I just, you could see my intuition was like, I need to go bishop c4. I don't know exactly how, but it just has to be a good move. Um, also, you know, like his king's still in the middle too. So d5 is the right is the right idea, and we're just gaining a lot of tempi on his pieces while his king's still in the middle of the board, and we have some nice attacking chances. Uh, again, queen b3 is a safety choice, which I think is, is somehow feels better than queen c2 because queen c2 was played in the game. Bishop f5, and now, well, now bishop c4 is interesting. This is what was played. I'm, I mean, I'm a little concerned about e3. I have to figure out how, how good that is. Just because just, just to calculate, um, if bishop takes, bishop takes, well, we can take and go pawn takes pawn, actually. So, uh, I mean, he can't take this because we take with the queen, but he can take on f2. After king takes, bishop takes. This seems okay for white to me. It seems like we have two bishops in open lines, so I don't think e3 is so great. Yeah, he didn't go e3. Well, what's interesting is in the... You know, in the annotations, he wrote exclamation point question mark. But to me, it's like the super obvious move, bishop to c4. Like, why... Oh, he's worried about this. Um, yeah, we... And then he gives a note that uh, queen a4 check. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously just good for white. I mean, because bishop f7, bishop d7 runs into this tactic, and bishop queen d7 runs into bishop b5. Any king move, okay, whatever. We're down a... <laughs> His king's in the middle of the board, so I mean, queen b4 or something. There's no way this is um, acceptable for black. So I think bishop c4 is just clearly the best move. Uh, he notes that knight b3 is the safer choice, but not really. Wait, why is that safer? e3? Queen e2, I guess. Um... It's not safe to not develop your pieces. <laughs> that's not that's not safe. Bishop c4 is by far safer. The the the, the word safe you can't just you. I, like this is safe because okay we we've given up a pawn but I mean his king's stranded in the middle of the board after queen a4. So like I don't know we I guess it's different definitions of safety to me when I read his annotations but basically we can't just not not develop our pieces. So bishop c4, very good move in my opinion. Now white to move. Well, first thing I would think about, is there any way to stop him from castling? Because if there is, he could be in trouble. Like queen b3 was played in the game, and then he went rook d8. Why can't... So this is interesting now, because he didn't castle. I mean, maybe d5 is strong for some reason. Like, like if castle is d5, and if the knight moves, we can take on f6. But that's interesting. Now, now we have all this. I don't know. We have potential. <laughs> the queen a three. We can go. I guess queen d six or something. Queen b three looks like a nice move. So far, like from a superficial standpoint, I haven't seen anything that that White's done is horrible. Or, you know, I like, again, that bishop c4 immediately looked good to me, and queen c2 looked a little odd, but it was nothing, like, nothing crazy. Uh, queen b3, rook d8 seems a little... Well, I mean, I guess he wants to stop d5, but he's still not castled. I mean, we could castle now, that would be, like, the, the normal thing to do. Um, and then I think what we'd be worried about is, after he takes, now he's threatening to take this, and it's hard to defend it. Somehow, should we, somehow we should be able to do something. Um, I don't know what exactly. Well, like, like for example, we can maybe just do, do this. 
Why? What am I talking about? I'm hanging my queen. Uh, <laughs> oh, we could take and take on b7. I don't know. I mean, you play castle queen side, which is just a little risky for sure. Um. For some no, I was thinking about knight f knight f one also. It's a weird, un, you know, we gotta develop probably. Wait, so if we take, and, and then do we have like some weird checks anywhere? Hmm. I don't know. Oh wait, you can take on f seven. What the hell? All right, so he, yeah, we should just castle. Wait, well, no, I wasn't thinking about I was thinking about after he castles, we, I can't remember how, I couldn't figure out how to defend it. I'm sorry, I got totally confused. I mean, we could always try this. This should probably work. Or maybe you can take on d4 anyway. If we take on f5, he takes on a1 or d2. I don't know, it just somehow feels like we should be able to do something. I, I guess worst case scenario, we could do this. But yeah, we either have to castle king side or queen side. I feel like in a game, I would just try to make castling king side work. Because when we go here, our king can never really come here because of this bishop. And so it's like feels a little unsafe. Let's see what the annotation says. It says castles doesn't work. What? He wrote castles doesn't work because of um, knight takes d4. But that's that's not true, I don't think. Um... I mean, this should this should be fine. We can take on f7. We could. I, I mean, probably would take on f7 and then just figure out something good to do. I mean, if you're not even threatening. Oh, you maybe are threatening to take the knight. No, you're mm, just barely. Like like one calculation is uh, queen a5 is only move. Queen a3 and check. Unfortunately, after king e7, he does get to take our rook back after we take his queen back. But, you know, this should be fine for us somehow. Um, I just gotta figure out how. Maybe knight c4 is playable. If you take, there should be some discovery that's strong. I don't know which one, though. I'm gonna turn on Houdini just to prove it. My intuition's always right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just says, it says, uh, knight c4. So, I mean, castles feels like the right move to me. After rook d8, yeah, just castles is given by Houdini. Rook d1 looks a little suspect. I just want to get my king safe. I feel like it's priority number one. And castle queen side is just a little risky. You see how much of chess is actually intuition. I mean, like, I'm not actually... I'm thinking about what move I want to play before I calculate. I don't calculate anything. I'm like, I want to castle. And then I try to make it work. Because I know these other choices, there's just not stuff I want to do. So really in chess, you need to... Worry sometimes more about your intuition than actual calculation. And you just have to know what moves you want to play. And you kind of just have to feel that they're really important to play. And then just somehow assume that you're going to make them work. So, like, what was I going to do against this? I totally forget. <laughs> um, I mean, I knew I wanted to do it. I just couldn't remember. I can't remember what I wanted to do here. But I'm sure there's something we can do. What did I say? Like, Rook D1? I forget. Let's see what Houdini says. I'm sure something's okay. Yeah, rook a d1 and says black's like a little better. Uh, any of take is cry some. Oh, I didn't see that. That's pretty cool. And if, if rook takes, I thought knight c4, but knight b1 for some reason. Oh, okay. He can't. He can't defend the rook. But I'm sure that that's not the only way to make something good happen after knight takes d4, is it? Let's find out. Yeah, he says knight b1 here. Oh, because bishop f7 is always playable after the queen moves. Rook a d1. I wonder if there are other moves other than this rook a1 type things. Actually, not so many, actually. Queen a3? Queen a7. Uh, I don't know, man. I just know that I would probably go castles. and I mean, whatever. The point is, I would find this variation with bishop f7 because I would spend all my time figuring out how to castle. 
Anyway, uh, White Castle Queenside, which, look, which looks very risky to me. Black Castle, and now White played d5, exclamation point, question mark. I'm still just worried about my king on c1. I suppose it's interesting, but like, if he takes, we can just maybe move the knight, and he has some big problems with this guy. Or knight f1 to, to e3, maybe. Let's see what happens after d5. I mean, it looks like an interesting move, for sure. Knight takes d5. Was played. Oh, and now bishop takes d5. Yeah, this looks quite quite bad. Um, knight f1 looks... Yeah, okay, and he actually wrote in his annotations. Knight f1 followed by knight, f, knight e3 is the best move. Uh, yeah, I mean... You have a pin with this rook on the queen, so the key is you need. That's the only, that's the main thing you have going with this move d5. I wonder if knight f1 if there's a defense. It looks like a strong move. Uh, no, it's just better. Yeah, so these are like just key moments where you just have to find the right move. So d5 very interesting. Um, black, but that's weird. It says for, no, it's changed his mind. So now it's like. It's starting to think castle queen size may be a good move because of this d5 idea. I mean, to me, I would never, never really think about it much. But maybe in reality, it was a very good practical choice. Now, because it's saying knight to e7 is the best, but yeah, this is just very, very risky. This knight is in in dire straits here. But after bishop takes, this is the key moment in the game, probably. I I assume now black is just much better. Um, Knight c4, but we, we've given up all of our play here. Knight to e3. I mean, never trade a pin piece, basically. I mean, I know the pin piece isn't pinned yet, but that's that's a general rule. Don't take a piece if it's pinned. Just don't do it. <laughs> um, and that will make your life a lot easier if you just memorize that rule. And, you know, knight f1, or honestly, no, probably knight f1 is the only one that makes sense. And it's just like, you don't take pin pieces, you add pressure to them. And that should just be, you, what you need in chess is to have lots of default rules that are built up in your head and work off of them. So you, you notice the, you know, the pattern and then you try to make something work using the rules that you've learned, such as don't just trade off pin pieces, instead try to gang up on them and, you know, put pressure on them or try to get castled as quickly as possible and, and stuff like that. Try to develop all your pieces and... You have to realize, like, you have to have a priority of needs and positions, uh, especially in the opening stage. You have to realize how important development is and try to make your developing moves work. Uh, but this is just another one where, you know, the piece is pinned. We just have to go knight f1. So, but he took, which is uh, definitely a misjudgment because now we have no compensation for the pawn as far as I'm concerned. Uh, bishop knight e3, bishop e6. And I might go through the rest of the game relatively quickly because... I think White's just in big trouble. Knight b4, and I think the, the key moments have already have already passed. King b1 gets out of the c c file pin. Rook c8, queen d2. He says White offers to trade into an inferior endgame. The only other option is, is queen e2, but after queen a4, queen c6. Yeah, I mean the thing is. Whose king is safer, whites or blacks? Black king is completely safe. Whites is, is pretty crappy. So I don't see any reason to keep queens on the board. I would say it makes sense to go into this pretty bad in game. We're just down a pawn. F5 is a good move. Coming with F4. Um, I mean, yeah, we're, we're in pretty big trouble here. King F7. G3 question mark, really? I don't understand why it's a question mark. It's actually the most... Obvious looking move to me. What maybe knight c2 to d4 or rook to d1? I don't know. I wonder what move he's saying is the best move. This move weakens f3 and g3, allowing the king to later threaten white's pawns. Stopping f4 is a non issue. I don't know if it's a non issue. I'm scared of f4. I don't know. It's just me. I'm scared of f4. But, uh, uh, like, like, if we do this, f4, and you move your knight somewhere, right? I don't know, maybe c2. And I was kind of I was kind of worried about this move. 
because knight d4 is not playable now. I mean, I don't know. Maybe king e7 first, just to keep f4 in check. I just think at some point we're going to have to go g3. I mean, I think it's kind of like, at some point the king got to f3, but... I don't know, f4 seems dangerous to me. I don't, I don't know about giving this move a question mark. It looks pretty logical to me. Um, rook to d4 was played. Um, I might think about this move, and like rook d8. Trade everything and try to create some kind of barrier. Like king c2. Put the king on c3. Well, no, sorry, we have to go a3 first. I mean, probably it's lost. I'm just just trying to make something happen. Black will go g5 and f4. I'm pretty sure we're going to lose this. Sometimes if you can kind of like blockade the play for the bishop, you can you can create a drawn position. But I, I have a bad feeling it's not going to happen here. Um. Yeah, but I mean, some chances maybe. I was thinking, no, nah, looks, looks kind of bad. Rook d4 was played. I mean, I still probably would have went into that end game and just tried, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe this is okay. I don't know why I didn't go rook d8, but he went king f6. Rook a4 looks strange to me. I would go rook to d1 here, but okay, he went rook a4. I guess rook a5 is playable. Oh, but he went knight c2 with a little question mark for some reason. Ah, uh, bishop c4 with the idea of bishop to d3. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, rook a5, keep the king out maybe. Uh, but I, I, I like just simply rook to d1 here. Just, you know, stop him from trading rooks with rook to d8. Rook a4 is just out of play. Knight c2. Bishop c4. Knight e okay, this is not a move you can play. Um, it's just too passive. We have to move our knight somewhere. I'm probably knight back, something horrible like this. And then king a1, and just try to untangle. I mean, our knight is good on e3, honestly, so maybe like b3 and king b2 or something. But obviously black's much, much better. But knight e1 is just like an unplayable move because the knight's too passive. Just can't do it. You can't do it unless it's absolutely forced, making moves like that. You know, I suck so bad. Okay, I, I totally apologize. I can't redo the whole video. <laughs> I was wondering what the hell is going on here. I totally apologize. I, I, I missed a move at some point, because I'm, I'm reading the moves off of... Um, I suck so bad. <laughs> Sorry, man. Well, listen, you understand my thought process in a position that didn't happen. <sighs> I'm really the worst. I should have copied the game over first so this wouldn't have happened, but I didn't. Because I was like, I'm not going to miss a move, Greg. But, like, yeah, I mean, Rook, Rook to D8 was played. Like a, normal, like a normal person would play that move. And so, whatever. Now we have this position. It makes a whole lot more sense. I was always wondering how that Rook was just sitting there on H1. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. My bad, my bad. I totally should have copied the game over. G3 still looks like a good move, but I don't know. I'm very depressed that I that I miss. <laughs> I, I might try to uh listen. I had a whole part of this video that was I, I can't edit. It takes forever, man. It takes forever to edit a video, so I apologize in advance. The, the most important stuff happened early in the game, anyway. So it's not a big deal, but yeah, now now ninety three bishop bishop d three is it's going to be mate because um back rank mate on c one. Um, I mean the position is pretty bad. Oh, you know one one problem is our king is not in the game too. So something to keep in mind. We should maybe try to find a way to get it into the game. King f4, rook a4, a6. I'm just looking at quickly, quickly now because I'm embarrassed that I... <laughs> I 
that I looked at five minutes of crap that wasn't even the position. Rook c7, preventing rook to d7, a very nice move. a3, bishop f1. Um, now he played king a2, and after rook c1, the, the knight's trapped, so he resigned. Um, what should he do? Well, really, he doesn't have anything to do. White's just, uh, maybe f3, I don't know. Nah, it doesn't help. You can go king e5 or something. Position's just lost. It's a completely lost position. Um, I mean, it's funny. Houdini says only down a pawn, which is not as lost as it should be. That's interesting. I mean, I figured it was more lost than this, but I guess the idea is what is white's plan? I, I just figure like king e5 and g5 and f4 is going to be torture eventually. Let's just try to play some moves out. I guess there's a lot of checks behind here. Rook f8. Yeah, it's kind of hard to um, stop the checks. What's up with e3? No good? Oh, we can take and there's a pin. So yeah, even here... Well, now knight c2 comes to e3, this is some good compensation. So, you know, in all positions, there... I, I, one thing, you know... I always, when I'm playing games, I always have hope. I never really give up, but sometimes analysis, I give up faster. But yeah, I mean, even in this position, we still have hope if we can just stay solid and don't collapse. This is a really important chess lesson. It's hard to win a chess game if you don't do anything horrible, even if your position's bad. If you can just hang in there and not blunder anything. You don't have to make your position better. You don't have to do anything sometimes. Just don't make it worse. Sometimes it's very difficult uh, to win. I think in this position, it might be. Because we play b3 and just king b2 to b1 and, you know, rook to d8 if we have to. What is black's plan? I don't know. I'm sure he has one. I'm sure black is winning. But let's make them find it. But anyway, the keys to this game. Um, for somebody watching, I would say to be obsessed with developing your pieces, like that bishop c4 idea in the beginning. Just... You know, what he what what the guy did in the game wasn't so bad. But you could see to me like you, you see what move I'm I, I focus in on and really want to play. Number two is castling, uh is important, of course. Although castle's queen side in this game I think was an interesting dynamic option. Uh number three, do not trade a piece that you can pin. Instead pin it, put pressure on it. At least you should always strongly look at that idea. If for some reason it doesn't work at all, okay, maybe you can trade it, but usually you don't want to trade pin pieces. Uh, and number four lesson, number four lesson would be to make sure you play the stupid right moves on the board before you analyze it for five minutes. <laughs> and number five would be um, to kind of realize how difficult it is to win chess games, even winning ones, and don't break. Keep your position intact. Because think about this. I mean... King a2 is just a horrifically bad move. He just loses a knight. And the player with the white pieces is, as far as I can tell, much stronger than somebody who will play a move like this. So why does this move end up getting played? Well, because when the position is bad, it's very unpleasant to defend it, and it often leads to unforced errors. You want your errors to be forced. You want your opponent to like kind of make you make a mistake, and not just kind of give it to them. And I, I think that's... That's what happened here. And if you can kind of go into your next game when you get a bad position and say, listen, I'm just going to sit down there, hunker down, defend hard, and make my opponent beat me. Because I'm telling you, I don't think this guy would beat me here. Because, you know, I've, I've defended horrible positions before. I'm surprised, actually, that how defensible this position is. Because the more I look at it, it's very hard for white to come up with a plan. Black, sorry. Like an active plan. I do agree that it's probably lost, but it's not a piece of cake either. If you just sit there, hold on tight, play something like b3, king b2, and just say to them, what are you going to do to beat me? So a lot of in interesting things happen in this game. Overall, uh, a pretty interesting game. And I think the, the opening was a, a bit of a success for white in, in some sense because... I get the sense he was playing a stronger player, and, and he did get a good position after d5, knight takes d5. If he just found knight to f1, I think black would have been slightly on the ropes there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you some other time when I do this. Uh, and again, anyone who wants their game analyzed by posting on Reddit, do a good job like this guy did. You know, put, put a lot of time into it, 
energy, analyze it, and also don't post a gamey one, because that always annoys me. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.